I am one of the eleven contestants thrust into the dark and twisted spectacle known as Blood Games. Each of us has a story, a desperate reason to be here. As we stand in the blinding spotlight, the host's voice booms over the intercom, the rules are simple, survive the games, win the prize, and reclaim our lives. But the stakes are high, and the price of failure is death. The host, a man shrouded in mystery and darkness, unveils the titles of the games, 1, The Gauntlet of Blades, 2, The Pit of Despair, 3, The Maze of Shadows, 4, The Bridge of No Return, 5, the arena of annihilation. Introducing us one by one, Alex, a debt-ridden gambler seeking redemption. Mara, a single mother fighting for her child's future. Javier, an ex-soldier looking for a new purpose. Kim, a tech genius with a dark secret. David, a failed actor craving the spotlight. Sophia, a disillusioned doctor tired of saving lives. Ethan, a thrill seeker addicted to danger. Lena, a former athlete fallen from grace. Haruto, a reclusive artist yearning for recognition, Rachel, a journalist. Chasing the ultimate story, me, an ordinary person, trapped in extraordinary circumstances. The first game begins. The Gauntlet of Blades, X were led into a vast chamber filled with swinging pendulums, spinning saws, and blades jutting from the walls. The goal is simple, reach the other side. The reality, however, is far from it. As the countdown begins, I sprint forward, narrowly dodging a swinging blade that nearly slices me in half. Mara isn't so lucky, a saw catches her leg, and she falls, screaming. Blood sprays as the pendulum swings back, ending her suffering. The sight of her lifeless body fuels my determination. I push through, every second a battle for survival. The pit of despair, only eight of us remain. We're ushered into a cavernous room with a deep pit in the center. The walls are lined with spikes, and the floor is covered in a slippery, blood-slicked surface. The objective, avoid falling into the pit, Javier slips first, his scream echoing as he plummets into the darkness. We hear the sickening thud of his body hitting the spikes. David and Sophia try to team. The maze of shadows, six contestants left. We're dropped into a labyrinthine maze, its walls shifting and changing. In the darkness, unseen traps await. Kim, the tech genius, uses her skills to navigate, but she triggers a trap that releases a swarm of mechanical blades. Her screams are cut short, replaced by the sound of metal on flesh, I stick close to Lena, who moves with the grace of her athletic past. But the maze is relentless, and soon, Ethan's thrill-seeking nature becomes his downfall. He steps into a room that floods with fire, his agonized cries a reminder of the stakes. The bridge of no return, four of us stand on the edge of a narrow bridge spanning a bottomless chasm. The bridge is old and crumbling, every step a gamble. Haruto makes it halfway before a section gives way, sending him into the abyss. Rachel clings to the edge, her fingernails breaking as she scrambles for grip. She pleads for help, but there's no room for mercy. I step over her, focusing on survival. The arena of annihilation, three contestants remain. The final game is a brutal fight to the death. The arena is filled with weapons, axes, swords, and spears. The host watches with sadistic glee as we turn on each other, Lena and I form a temporary alliance, taking down David. His death is swift, but as he falls, Lena turns on me. We battle fiercely, each strike fueled by desperation. I manage to disarm her and, with a heavy heart, end her life, I stand alone, bloodied and battered, the sole survivor of the blood games. The host approaches, a twisted smile on his face. He hands me the prize, a briefcase filled with money. But the cost has been too high. As I leave the arena, the screams of the fallen echo in my mind. Freedom tastes bitter, but I am alive. The blood games have ended, 
but the memories will haunt me forever. The door to the outside world loomed before me, a heavy steel portal promising escape. The weight of the briefcase in my hand felt like a cruel joke, a reminder of the bloodshed and betrayal that had led to this moment. I took a deep breath and pushed open the door, stepping into the blinding sunlight, the world outside felt foreign, like a dream I could barely grasp. My senses were dulled, my mind still trapped in the nightmare of the blood games. I stumbled into the street, the sounds of the city assaulting my ears. People walked by, oblivious to the horrors I had endured, I found a small motel on the outskirts of town, a place where I could hide and try to piece my life back together. The room was dingy and smelled of stale cigarettes, but it was a sanctuary compared to the arena. I sat on the bed, the briefcase beside me, and stared at the walls, trying to process everything that had happened. Days turned into weeks, and I began to settle into a routine. I avoided the news, afraid that the blood games might be mentioned, that the faces of the fallen might haunt me through the television screen. But the memories were relentless, invading my dreams and turning every quiet moment into a battle against my own mind. One night, as I lay in bed, the phone rang. I answered it with a shaking hand, my heart racing. A voice on the other end, cold and familiar, sent chills down my spine, congratulations on your victory, the host said, his tone mocking. But the games are far from over, I hung up, my hands trembling. The nightmares intensified, the whispers of the dead growing louder. It was as if the blood games had left a mark on my soul, a darkness that refused to let go. Desperate for answers, I began to investigate the origins of the blood games. I scoured the internet, contacted conspiracy theorists, and pieced together a chilling picture. The Blood Games were part of a larger network, a clandestine organization that thrived on bloodshed and chaos. Their reach was vast, their influence insidious. As I dug deeper, I discovered that the Blood Games were broadcasted to a select group of wealthy and powerful individuals who reveled in the spectacle of human suffering. The games were a twisted form of entertainment, a way for the elite to sate their bloodlust and maintain control over the masses. I knew I couldn't take them down alone, but I couldn't live with the knowledge of their existence either. I reached out to the other survivors I could find, people who had managed to escape the games but were living in fear and hiding. Together, we formed a plan to expose the blood games, to bring their horrors to light. The night of our operation, my nerves were frayed to the breaking point. We hacked into the broadcast system, ready to stream the truth to the world. As we prepared to go live, the door burst open, and armed men stormed in. The organization had found us, a brutal fight ensued. The room filled with the sounds of gunfire and screams. My companions fell one by one, their blood mingling with the memories of the games. I fought with a ferocity born of desperation, determined to see our mission through, in the chaos, I managed to hit the broadcast button. The world would see the truth, even if it was the last thing I did. I felt a sharp pain in my side as a bullet tore through me, and I fell to the ground, clutching my wound, the screen flickered to life, the horrific images of the blood games playing out for all to see. The men who had stormed and looked on in horror, realizing too late that they had failed to stop us. The truth was out. As darkness closed in, I heard sirens in the distance, the sound of justice finally catching up to the monsters who had orchestrated the blood games. I closed my eyes, a sense of peace washing over me. The cycle of bloodshed was ending, and though I might not survive, I knew our sacrifice had not been in vain. The last thing I saw before slipping into unconsciousness was the faces of my fallen companions, their expressions no longer twisted in agony, but in triumph. The blood games were over, and the world would never be the same, I woke up in a hospital bed, the sterile smell of antiseptic filling my nostrils. My body ached, and a dull pain throbbed in my side where the bullet had hit. I blinked against the harsh fluorescent lights, trying to piece together the fragments of my memory. The broadcast, 
The gunfight, the faces of my fallen companions, everything came rushing back. A nurse noticed I was awake and hurried to my side. You're in the hospital, she said softly. You were found with several others. The authorities brought you here. As she spoke, the door opened, and a man in a suit stepped in. He introduced himself as Detective Harris, a stern look etched into his features. You did a brave thing, exposing the blood games. Thanks to you, we have leads we never would have had, are the others. I asked, my voice weak, Harris's expression softened. I'm sorry. You were the only survivor we found alive. But your broadcast, it changed everything. The world saw the truth, and now we have the public's support in dismantling this organization. He explained that the broadcast had gone viral. People were outraged, demanding justice for the victims of the blood games. The authorities had launched a massive investigation, arresting key figures and raiding properties linked to the organization. The public's fury was a powerful force, and the once-hidden network was crumbling under the weight of its own exposure. Despite the progress, there was still work to be done. Harris wanted my help to identify members of the organization and provide any information I had gathered. I agreed, knowing that I couldn't let my companion's sacrifices be in vain, weeks turned into months as we worked tirelessly to bring the perpetrators to justice. The investigation uncovered a vast web of corruption and depravity that reached into the highest echelons of society. Each arrest brought us closer to dismantling the network, but the fight was far from over. One evening, as I was poring over documents in a safe house, I received a call from Harris. We found something, he said, his tone urgent. You need to see this, he picked me up, and we drove to a secluded warehouse. Inside, a team of agents was combing through evidence. Harris led me to a room where a large screen displayed security footage. My heart sank as I recognized the faces of new contestants being led into an arena. The blood games are still happening, Harris said grimly. Despite our efforts, the organization has gone underground. They've adapted, become even more secretive, rage and determination welled up inside me. We can't let this continue, I said, clenching my fists. We have to stop them, Harris nodded. We will. But we need to be smarter, more vigilant. And we need your help. Over the next few months, we devised a plan to infiltrate the remaining factions of the Blood Games. I became the face of the resistance, using my experiences to rally others to our cause. Survivors from previous games came forward, sharing their stories and joining the fight, our efforts culminated in a coordinated strike on one of the last strongholds of the organization. It was a sprawling mansion, hidden in the countryside, where the elite gathered to indulge in their twisted entertainment. We moved in under the cover of darkness, determined to end the blood games once and for all, the raid was brutal and chaotic. Gunfire echoed through the halls as we fought our way through the mansion. I led a team into the heart of the operation, where we found the arena and the new contestants, terrified and battered. We freed them, guiding them to safety while the battle raged on. In the final moments of the raid, I confronted the mastermind behind the Blood Games, a man known only as the Benefactor. He was calm, almost amused, as I held a gun to his head, you think you've won, he sneered. There will always be those who crave blood and spectacle. You can't change human nature, maybe not, I replied, my voice steady. But we can make sure people like you pay for your crimes. With that, I pulled the trigger, ending his reign of terror, the blood games were over, their dark legacy shattered. The world had seen the depths of human depravity and responded with a collective cry for justice. I knew the scars would never fully heal, but I had found a new purpose in the fight against those who thrived on suffering, as I stood among the ruins of the mansion, the first light of dawn breaking over the horizon, I felt a sense of closure. The Blood Games had taken so much, but they had also given me a mission, 
a reason to keep fighting. The cycle of bloodshed had ended, and in its place, we had forged a path to a better future. Months passed since the final raid on the Blood Game stronghold. The media had dubbed it, the end of an era of terror. The world watched in horror and relief as those responsible were brought to justice. Trials were swift and the sentences harsh, reflecting the public's outcry for retribution, I was hailed as a hero, though the title felt hollow. The faces of my fallen companions haunted my dreams, their sacrifice is a constant reminder of the price we paid. Despite the accolades and attention, I remained focused on the mission, there were still victims to find, and remnants of the organization to dismantle. Detective Harris became a close ally, our bond forged in the fires of our shared battle. We spent countless hours interrogating captured members of the Blood Games, piecing together the full extent of the network. Each lead brought us closer to unraveling the twisted web of corruption that had allowed such atrocities to thrive. One evening, as Harris and I reviewed documents in his office, a call came in. It was from an informant who had managed to infiltrate a surviving faction of the Blood Games. They had critical information about a hidden facility where survivors of previous games were held, people who were thought to be dead or missing, we have to move fast, Harris said, hanging up the phone. If they're still holding survivors, we need to get them out now. We assembled a team and set off under the cover of night, our destination a remote compound in the mountains. The journey was tense, every second filled with the anticipation of what we might find. As we approached, the sight of the heavily guarded facility confirmed our worst fears, we moved in swiftly, disabling guards and breaching the compound's perimeter. Inside, the scene was both horrifying and heart-wrenching. Emaciated survivors were chained in cells, their eyes hollow and filled with despair. They had been forgotten, left to wither away in darkness, we freed them, guiding them to safety while securing the compound. Among the survivors was someone I recognized, Rachel, the journalist from the Blood Games. She had somehow survived and been recaptured, her spirit battered but unbroken, thank you, she whispered, tears streaming down her face as I helped her to her feet. I thought no one would ever come. As we escorted the survivors out, we discovered evidence of further atrocities, records of other hidden facilities and plans for new games. The organization's reach was deeper than we had imagined, their resources vast and their determination unyielding, the battle was far from over, the evidence we uncovered sparked a renewed effort to hunt down every last remnant of the Blood Games. With the help of international authorities and newfound allies, we launched a global operation. The world had seen the horrors of the games, and now, there was no turning back, Rachel, once a captive, became a vital part of our team. Her journalistic skills and first-hand experience provided invaluable insights into the organization's inner workings. Together, we tracked down hidden leaders and dismantled their operations one by one. The fight was relentless, each victory a small step toward justice. Yet, the shadows of the Blood Games were pervasive, their influence reaching into places we never expected. Corrupt officials, wealthy patrons, and hidden cells continued to challenge us at every turn, years passed, and the war against the Blood Games raged on. We had managed to cripple their operations significantly, but one final stronghold remained, a fortress hidden in the heart of a desolate desert. It was there that the true masterminds resided, orchestrating the games from the safety of their isolated haven, we prepared for the final assault, knowing that this would be the most dangerous mission yet. The fortress was heavily fortified, surrounded by treacherous terrain and guarded by elite mercenaries. Failure was not an option. Under the cover of a sandstorm, we launched our attack. The battle was fierce and chaotic, every step forward met with brutal resistance. But we fought with a determination fueled by years of suffering and loss. Harris led the charge, his tactical expertise guiding us through the storm, as we breached the inner sanctum, the true leaders of the Blood Games stood before us. Their faces were a mixture of arrogance and fear, their empire crumbling around them. 
The final confrontation was brutal and bloody, a testament to the horrors they had unleashed upon the world. In the end, we emerged victorious. The leaders were captured, their reign of terror finally at an end. The fortress was dismantled, its secrets exposed to the world. In the end, we emerged victorious. The leaders were captured, their reign of terror finally at an end. The fortress was dismantled, its secrets exposed to the world, the fall of the final stronghold marked the end of the blood games. The world breathed a collective sigh of relief as the last remnants of the organization were brought to justice. The survivors, once forgotten, were finally given the recognition and support they deserved, Rachel and I continued to work together, dedicating our lives to ensuring that such atrocities would never happen again. We established foundations to support survivors, advocating for stronger international laws against human trafficking and exploitation. Our efforts were tireless, but they were driven by the memories of those we had lost, the scars of the blood games would never fully heal, but we had turned our pain into purpose. The darkness that once thrived in the shadows had been brought into the light, and we were determined to keep it there. As I stood at the edge of the desert, the sun setting behind me, I felt a sense of closure. The blood games were over, their legacy reduced to ash. The world had changed, and we had played our part in shaping a future where such horrors would never again be allowed to flourish, the fight was over, but the mission to protect the innocent uphold justice would continue. And in that, I found a new sense of peace, years after the fall of the blood games, the world had changed dramatically. Laws were stricter, governments more vigilant, and societies more aware of the horrors that had once been hidden in the shadows. The survivors, myself included, had found ways to rebuild our lives, though the scars remained both visible and invisible. Rachel I had become D faces of D fight against D remnants of D blood games. Our foundation grew into a global movement, advocating for D victims of all forms of exploitation ensuring that the world would never forget the atrocities that had been committed. Despite the progress, whispers of underground games still reached our ears from time to time. These whispers haunted me, a constant reminder that evil, while diminished, was not entirely eradicated, one cold winter evening, as Rachel and I were wrapping up a meeting with international human rights advocates, I received an anonymous message on my phone. It contained a single, chilling sentence, The games are not over. Attached was a video clip of a masked figure standing in front of a bound and gagged person. The figure's voice was distorted, but the message was clear, To the heroes of the blood games, you thought you could destroy us, but you were wrong. The games have evolved, and they will never end, Rachel's face paled as she watched the video. We need to find them, she said, determination burning in her eyes. We can't let this start again. Detective Harris, now retired but still a valuable ally, joined us in our investigation. Using every resource at our disposal, we traced the origins of the video to a remote location in Eastern Europe. It was a small, secluded village, far from prying eyes, our team, now consisting of hardened veterans from the fight against the blood games, prepared for the mission. The journey to the village was fraught with danger, every step reminding us of the stakes. As we approached, the air grew thick with tension, the village appeared abandoned, its buildings dilapidated and streets empty. But beneath the surface, we could sense the presence of something sinister. Harris led the way, his experience guiding us through the eerie silence. In the center of the village, we found an old church, its doors ajar. Inside, the atmosphere was suffocating. The pews were covered in dust, and the air smelled of decay. At the altar, a trapdoor led to an underground chamber. We descended into the darkness, our flashlights cutting through the blackness. The chamber below was a stark contrast to the abandoned village above. It was a high-tech facility, filled with monitors and equipment. It was clear that the games had been modernized, their brutality enhanced by technology. As we moved deeper, we discovered cages holding captives, people who had been taken for the new games. 
Among them was a familiar face, one of the survivors we had rescued years ago, now recaptured and awaiting a new round of horrors, the sight of them fueled our resolve. We freed the captives and prepared to confront the masterminds behind this new iteration of the blood games, at the heart of the facility, we found the control room. The masked figure from the video was there, surrounded by armed guards. The tension was palpable as we stepped into the room, our weapons drawn. We descended into the darkness, our flashlights cutting through the blackness. The chamber below was a stark contrast to the abandoned village above. It was a high-tech facility, filled with monitors and equipment. It was clear that the games had been modernized, their brutality enhanced by technology. As we moved deeper, we discovered cages holding captives, people who had been taken for the new games. Among them was a familiar face, one of the survivors we had rescued years ago, now recaptured and awaiting a new round of horrors, the sight of them fueled our resolve. We freed the captives and prepared to confront the masterminds behind this new iteration of the blood games, at the heart of the facility, we found the control room. The masked figure from the video was there, surrounded by armed guards. The tension was palpable as we stepped into the room, our weapons drawn. Welcome, the figure said, their voice still distorted. You can't stop us. The games will continue, and the world will watch. We stopped you before, I replied, my voice steady. We'll stop you again, a fierce battle erupted. Gunfire echoed through the chamber, the fight more desperate than any we had faced before. Harris fought beside me, his determination unwavering. Rachel used her skills to disable the facility systems, cutting off their ability to broadcast the games. In the chaos, I confronted the masked figure. Our fight was brutal, a clash of wills and strength. As we struggled, I managed to rip off the mask, revealing the face of a man I had never seen before but whose eyes were filled with a familiar madness. You think killing me will end this? He spat. There will always be someone else, with a final, decisive blow, I ended his life. The room fell silent, the last echoes of the battle fading into nothingness. The remaining guards surrendered, their spirit broken. Welcome, the figure said, their voice still distorted. You can't stop us. The games will continue, and the world will watch, we stopped you before, I replied, my voice steady. We'll stop you again, a fierce battle erupted. Gunfire echoed through the chamber, the fight more desperate than any we had faced before. Harris fought beside me, his determination unwavering. Rachel used her skills to disable the facility systems, cutting off their ability to broadcast the games. In the chaos, I confronted the masked figure. Our fight was brutal, a clash of wills and strength. As we struggled, I managed to rip off the mask, revealing the face of a man I had never seen before but whose eyes were filled with a familiar madness. You think killing me will end this? He spat. There will always be someone else, with a final, decisive blow, I ended his life. The room fell silent, the last echoes of the battle fading into nothingness. The remaining guards surrendered, their spirit broken. The aftermath of our latest victory against the Blood Games brought a mix of relief and unease. The rescued captives were receiving medical attention, and the captured guards and facilitators were handed over to the authorities. The world watched in shock as the news broke, yet again, of the survival and resurgence of the blood games. Public outrage was palpable, and pressure mounted on governments to ensure that this dark chapter would never be reopened. Rachel, Harris, and I returned to our headquarters, where a wall of evidence and leads awaited us. Despite the success of the mission, there was a growing sense that we were only scratching the surface of a much larger, more insidious network. As we pored over the data retrieved from the latest facility, we found disturbing patterns indicating that the blood games were not merely the work of isolated cells but part of a sophisticated, global network. There were encrypted communications, financial transactions, and names of high-profile individuals who seemed to be involved at various levels, 
Rachel's journalistic instincts kicked in. This is bigger than we thought, she said, her eyes scanning the documents. These people have deep connections. They're not just running games, they're manipulating events, influencing decisions on a global scale, Harris nodded, his face grim. This isn't just about stopping the games. It's about dismantling an entire power structure. We knew we needed a new strategy. Taking down individual facilities and rescuing captives was not enough. We had to strike at the heart of the organization. We decided to infiltrate their network, gather irrefutable evidence, and expose their entire operation to the world. Rachel went undercover, using her skills and contacts to get close to those at the top. Harris coordinated with international law enforcement agencies, setting up a task force dedicated to tracking and dismantling the network. I focused on following the money, tracing the financial threads that connected the different factions of the blood games, months turned into years as we delved deeper into the network. We made significant progress, but with each step forward, the enemy adapted. They were always one step ahead, anticipating our moves and covering their tracks. It became clear that there were moles within our ranks, feeding information to the organization. One evening, as I was working late, a secure message flashed on my screen. It was an anonymous tip, pointing to a location in South America where the leaders of the Blood Games were rumored to be meeting. The message included coordinates and a time, I showed the message to Rachel and Harris. It could be a trap, Harris warned. But if it's real, this could be our chance to strike at the heart of the operation, we decided to take the risk. With a small, elite team, we set out for the location, prepared for whatever awaited us, the coordinates led us to an abandoned mansion deep in the jungle. As we approached, the sense of foreboding grew. We moved in cautiously, the night cloaking our movements. Inside, the mansion was eerily silent, but signs of recent activity were everywhere. We split into teams, sweeping through the building. In the basement, we found a control room filled with monitors and equipment, evidence of the organization's reach and power. But there was no sign of the leaders, suddenly, alarms blared, and the mansion was flooded with armed guards. A fierce firefight erupted, the confined spaces amplifying the chaos. Harris and I fought side by side, our training and experience guiding us through the maelstrom, as we pushed forward, I spotted a hidden passageway. Motioning for Harris to follow, we descended into the darkness. The passage led to an underground bunker, where a group of people sat around a large table, their faces illuminated by the glow of computer screens, the final confrontation was brutal. These were the masterminds, the architects of the Blood Games, and they fought with a desperation born of knowing that their empire was crumbling. The air was thick with gunfire and the scent of blood. In the end, we stood victorious. The leaders lay defeated, their reign of terror finally at an end. We secured the bunker and prepared to transmit the evidence to the authorities. But as we did, a chilling realization hit us. As we reviewed the documents and communications, it became clear that the network was even more extensive than we had imagined. There were references to other cells, other leaders who were already moving to fill the power vacuum. Harris looked at me, his expression weary but resolute. This fight is far from over, he said. We've struck a blow, but the beast is still alive, Rachel, who had joined us in the bunker, nodded. We need to keep going, keep pushing. We can't stop now. We transmitted the evidence, knowing it would lead to more arrests and more exposure. But we also knew that our work was not finished. The blood games were a symptom of a deeper rot, one that would take years, maybe decades, to fully eradicate, as we emerged from the bunker, the first light of dawn breaking over the horizon, I felt a mixture of triumph and uncertainty. We had won a significant battle, but the war against the darkness was ongoing, the blood games had ended, but the echoes of their brutality would linger. Our mission was clear, 
to hunt down every last remnant of the network, to bring justice to every victim, and to ensure that the world remained vigilant against the evils that lurked in the shadows, the journey was far from over, and as we moved forward, I knew we would face new challenges and new horrors. But we were ready, united in our resolve to fight for a world free from the terror of the blood games.